I'm here with my June wrap up. It's almost the end of July now. So normally I would do my next month's TBR at the end of the video, but since it's already almost August, there's no point in doing a July TBR at the end of this. In the month of June, I read three physical books, listened to an audiobook, well, one of the physical books I mostly read on audiobook, and I read a graphic novel. I only read one of the books that was on my June TBR, and that is because whenever I did the June TBR, I had already finished this book. And that is The Eye of the World, the first book in the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. This is a high fantasy series, and this follows three young men, boys who are on the verge of being men, as they are running from the forces of evil and they do not know why they are chasing them. That is pretty much all I could say about this without being spoilery. This is the first book in a 14 slash 15 book series. There are 14 books in the official lineup and there is a prequel that was written after book 9 or something like that. I have already read the prequel. This is the second book that I have read for the series. I was planning on picking up book two this month as well, but that didn't happen. I didn't want to be burnt out on high fantasy, because these are huge freaking books. So I didn't want it to be the only book that I read, so I went ahead and read a couple of the books that I actually purchased in June. I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. It was amazing. There were a couple of parts that were kind of eh. And there was actually a part in here when a guy actually said that he let out a breath that he didn't realize he was holding. So that was interesting. I listened to that in the audiobook. This is the one that I mostly listened to on audiobook and then finished it in physical form because I found out that I can't listen to high fantasy on audio. I have to actually read it because otherwise I don't retain like hardly any of the information. I was listening to the audiobook and it said that in the audiobook and I was like, wait a second, did that just really say what I thought it said? And I had to go back in my physical copy and I was like, oh yeah, he let out a breath. He didn't realize he was holding. That's new. A new twist on an old favorite. On to book two. So this is a book that I had been told a lot about from a particular booktuber who I'm not going to mention because there's a lot of controversy surrounding him and his channel and I don't want to stir any of that up, but I heard about this long before that started. And that is Meg by Steve Alton. This is a book about the Megalodon, which is a prehistoric shark that is so much bigger than the Great White, and how they could have actually survived to be alive today. I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars. The whole concept of the Megalodon and everything surrounding it was really cool and very interesting. I liked all the scientific stuff. The thing that I didn't like was the characters. I did not like hardly any of the characters because they were all selfish assholes. Just putting that out there. <laughs> There's no better way to say that. Although most of them end up getting killed in the end of this, so I guess that made it a little okay. A little bit of spoiler there, people get killed, but most of them were assholes, so win-win? I don't know. This is the first book in a series of books. I think there's four out now. I'm not sure if I want to continue on with the series, especially if all the characters end up being selfish jerks, like they were in this one. Next book. The next book I read in June was Black Horses for the King by Anne McCaffrey. 
I actually picked this up because Whitney over at Whitney Novels had mentioned there not being very many horse books and she really likes books on horses and I was looking for books, Pern books, because Anne McCaffrey writes the Pern series and there's like 30 or 40 books in that series now, I think. And I was looking at her books at a used bookstore, seeing if I could find some hardcovers, because they're really hard to find, especially in the older ones that were written in like the 80s. And I came across this, and I was like, this is a book about horses that I didn't know that one of my favorite authors had written. So I went ahead and picked it up, because on the back, it's talking about designing sandals for horses. So one of the big things in this is the creation of horseshoes and why they were created and why they needed to be made for the horses and why horses need horseshoes, which I honestly have never really been around horses so I didn't know anything about that. But this is an Arthurian retelling or uh, King Arthur. And this isn't like the Hollywood, this is more factual than almost anything in Hollywood. Which was really cool because it's historical fiction, but more real historical fiction than what most of the Arthurian retellings are. And I learned a lot about the knights, and King Arthur, and horses, and all kinds of stuff. So I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. It's pretty short. It's just a little over 200 pages, so it's pretty short, but it was really interesting and really fun to read. The next book I read I listened to on audiobook from the library, so I do not have a physical copy. I really want to get a physical copy, and that is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass, and I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. It is a book about fairies, and not just a little twinkly flying fairies like Tinkerbell that are just a little bit mischievous. No, this is about the dark and creepy and deadly fairies, which was really cool. It is more of a new adult than a young adult, because there are sexy times in it, but I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. I picked up book two as pretty much as soon as I finished reading it. And yeah, I really want to buy the book now because I listened to the audiobook from the library and I don't own it. And I want to own it so I can reread it whenever I want. And the graphic novel that I read in June was American Vampire by Scott Snyder, Raphael Albuquerque, and Stephen King. And I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed the storyline. I liked the actual writing in the book. What I didn't really care for was the pictures. Like, I don't know if you can see. I hope you can't read too much. But the girls' faces in this are just... I don't know, the guys, have, their faces are okay, but the girls, I just, I don't know what's wrong with them. Like, they just, they look puffy and weird. It's the only thing that I can say about it. They just look puffy and weird. I don't know, like, overall, they're, they're pretty cool. The drawing's pretty cool, but almost all the girls' faces just look puffy and out of place, especially with the emotions that they're supposed to be conveying in each of the pages. They, their facial expressions do not match the feelings that they're supposed to be feeling. I only gave this one a 3 out of 5 stars, and if you couldn't tell, this is about vampires, and it's like set in the Wild West and in the 20s. So that was interesting. I don't really care for the Wild West very much, but the 20s was interesting. The Wild West parts were interesting, just it's usually not my thing. So those are all the books that I read in the month of June. 
And I can already tell you right now that I have already read four books for the month of July, and I am almost done with my fifth book, and I read some graphic novels also. So that'll be in my July wrap-up, and I will see you next time.